Developing apps for Android is an exciting opportunity to change the world. I'm going to step you through the process of getting started with Android using Android Studio, while also sharing some pro tips based on the experiences of a real Android startup. Before we even install Android Studio, you should start thinking about the app you plan to build. Start by looking at the challenges you, your friends, or family face. Could you build an app to solve one of those problems? Let's take a look at our startup and see where their idea came from. There's somebody in here. There's a house. Come on. Open up. Hey. Somebody open hey. up in here. We have something hey, to say. Get, get a open. door. Get something in there. Get. Just kick it open. Just come break on. It. Okay, ready? Oh, One. Two. Go. One. Well, that was unexpected. What the hell was that? What's going on? Zombies. Obviously, those were zombies. I, I don't know how, but I bet the bald guy is somehow to blame. Oh, sure. Solve one problem with the Android Nomicon, and suddenly this is my fault? How are we going to survive a zombie apocalypse? We don't have any training. It's not like we can go to Google Play, download an app. Like our startup team, you have a problem to solve, so it's time to start developing. First, check that you have version 7 or later of the Java Development Kit installed. Open a terminal window or a command prompt and type java-version. I'm doing this on a Mac, but it should look very similar on Linux or Windows. The Java version number is shown after the 1, so here you can see I've got JDK version 8 installed. If you see an error or the version is less than 7, you'll need to download and install the JDK. From this download page, find the Java Platform Standard Edition, select Download, and then select the right bundle for your operating system. I'm on a Mac, so I'll accept the license agreement and download the Mac OS X x64 installer for the Java SE Development Kit. Once that's downloaded, locate the file and double-click it to begin the installation process. Once that's completed, go back to your terminal and confirm that it's installed correctly. Now you're ready to install Android Studio. We'll start by navigating to the Android Studio homepage on developer.android.com sdk. There's a big button at the top that says Download Android Studio. Click that. Now carefully read the terms and conditions. Select the checkbox confirming that you've read them and agree with them, and then press the Download Android Studio button to begin the transfer. It's a pretty big file, so while you're waiting for that to complete, you've got a great opportunity to start thinking about the APIs you'll be using to build an app that solves your problem. This early in the product lifecycle, it's worth exploring some of the options made possible using new versions or even early access beta versions of the Android platform. Here we're looking at the new APIs available from the Marshmallow release of Android. Let's take a look at our startup team, exploring possibilities for their app. Ian, what's our status? How are we doing? Well, I'm sure glad we grabbed this dual-booted Chromebook on the way out. Google's got APIs for location-based services and mapping. Oh, but what about a fitness API? Oh, and we should make sure it works with Android Wear! Hey, hey, hey! Focus! Zombies! Is there like a zombie killing or zombie protection API or something? Although, location apps are pretty hot right now. I'm not finding anything in here. Check the Android Z preview release. The what? what? Android Z, the preview. What? Z! Z! Like, Z is in zebra? Uh, uh, Australians. Australians. Americans. Oh, yeah, here it is. There's even a method, is user a zombie, in the framework now. That would have been nice to have in the support library. Now that your download is finished, you're ready to install Android Studio. If you're on a Mac like me, double-click the file to open it. Then drag the Android icon into Applications. Now double-click the icon to start Android Studio for the first time. If you're on Windows, double-clicking the download will launch an installation wizard similar to what I'm about to show you here for the Mac. We'll then select a standard installation for Android Studio. Hit Finish to complete the installation. That's going to start downloading 2 to 3 gigs, which includes the Android SDK. That's going to take a while, so it's the perfect opportunity to take a break, make a cup of tea, and think about things like how to monetize your app. What do you think we should do about monetization? Because I feel like in-app billing would be great for all the extra skills and defenses, but subscription would be so consistent. Maybe we could try A-B testing both of them, see which one turns out to be more effective. That's true, that's a good idea. 
Hey, should we worry about performance this early? Uh, I mean, if you're being chased by a zombie, it seems like we'd want to be responsive, right? Right, so clearly we can't use any enums in our app. I don't know though, is that risking premature optimization? Hey, now listen here. All We've right. Download's done. <laughs> Okay, the download is complete, so hit finish and your installation is done. Now you're ready to start coding. We'll start by creating a new Hello World project that you can build from. Now keep in mind that Android Studio is constantly being updated and improved. As a result, the process for your particular version may look a little different to what I'm showing on screen. Don't be alarmed. The options presented in the general flow should still be very similar. Start by choosing to start a new Android Studio project. Give it a name and enter a domain. These two will be used together to form your app's package name. Package names must be unique, so ideally you'll own a domain and you can use it here. Even if you don't, try and select something that's unlikely to collide with another developer. I happen to own a domain, so I'll enter that here. I'm happy to use the default project location, so let's hit next to continue. Now we can select the devices we plan to target with our app. Eventually, we'll want to make our app available on all possible form factors, but for our first ever application, let's keep it simple and target only phones and tablets. Next, we can choose the minimum SDK we plan to support. Selecting a min SDK lets you choose your app's level of backwards compatibility. A lower value will make your app available to a larger number of devices, but in turn, will require you to do more work to ensure compatibility with devices that may not support all the features added in newer Android releases. You can check to see what proportion of Android devices are running on each platform release by clicking this Help Me Choose link. When we filmed this video in October of 2015, supporting back to Android 4.0 or Ice Cream Sandwich let us reach around 90% of devices. Now you're prompted to select a new activity or user interface screen type to add to your project. To get started, we'll choose a blank activity, give it a name and a title. The other files, layout, and menu resources will be automatically generated for you, and you can keep the default names. Then hit finish. Read some tips and wait for your new project to be created. This may take a little while the very first time you run it, so here's one we prepared earlier. Your Hello World app is now ready to run. You can see it running on the emulator by hitting the green run button like this and selecting the emulator. but it's much more fun to run it on a real Android device. Enable USB debugging by navigating to settings and going down to about phone. Then scroll down and press the build number seven times. This will enable developer options. Navigate back, select developer options and enable USB debugging from within there. If you're running Windows, you'll also need to download a driver for your phone. You can find drivers and installation instructions for them here on the Android developer site at developer.android.com slash tools slash extras slash OEM dash USB. Now plug your phone into your computer and if prompted, choose to allow USB debugging. Hit the run button in Android Studio, but this time select your real device. Congratulations, you're running your first app on a real phone. With that, you're ready to start building a real app. Unlike this example, you'll need to spend a lot of time working on a delightful, responsive, and intuitive user experience. Speaking of which, let's see how our startup is getting on. So, I've got the app running, but how do I know if it's working? It's not working! Have you enabled real-time location in the settings? Wait, is that the, uh, is that the brain icon or the celery stick? It's the celery stick. Then you scroll to the bottom and hit the version number seven times. Joanna, are you getting any of this? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to tell you guys. I decided to join a different startup called Meter, which will connect zombies with host humans and like make sure that they're fresh, juicy brains on demand. So it's gonna be great. But you're right, I, I should probably go. Good luck, you guys. <laughs> she could have left the shovel. Unfortunately for our courageous startup, they were late to market and they had some serious issues with their UX design. You can avoid their mistakes using our resources to learn how to build and design great Android apps. Good luck. Meter delivery. Hi, ah. you guys. How are you doing? You know, Colt, we definitely 
definitely use an enum to get to market faster. <laughs> <laughs>